with caution. What is up, my Dan enthusiasts, and welcome to another infinite video. Soon I'm gonna I'm gonna be called Caution the Infinite Man because that's all I'm doing. But you know, it's just it's been a lot of fun just keep it quiet Dan it's just been a lot of fun actually trying to find as many opportunities to get infinites going and that's why I'm gonna show you guys this video today I'm gonna show you most of the new infinites that I have found that are very easy to perform um, in in battle or during a, a specific string or anything like that because normally like I said infinites back in the day um, before I actually came up with this, um, you know, small tech that I found with Light Punch Gadoken. You can watch the previous video that I uploaded about that. I will link it in the description. Uh, but before that, everything was very specific in terms of setup. There was always like a very specific setup or strings you had to do in order to make this work. And like I said, that is going to be in the past from now on. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys some of these setups that I have found that are, like I said, very easy to perform during a match and I can give you an infinite. So the first example that I actually showed you already in a previous video was a standing light punch getting blocked or hit, you know, doesn't really matter, works both ways. And then you go straight into back HK. From the crush counter, you can do crouching fierce, fierce skill cancel into standing medium punch into EX Gadoken, and then you got your setup going. Um, what you need to do after that is your two first strings, so your two crouching fierces sequences, you have to do a delayed fireball, and after that you're good to go. There we go. Uh, well, it's a little bit impossible combo because there are opportunities where you can build enough bar uh, to get the super going, but that's very rare. You need to have a lot of sequences. But yeah, as you saw, two crouching fierces uh, requires a charge Gadoken. After that, you do three crouching fears into Gadoken, and then you can get everything going with standing fierce. Then it becomes very normal from there on out. Uh, but this one is easy to do and it works against delay trotec most of the time as well um it also works Let's see if i can show you guys uh once again this is very specific but i guess i'll just do it on wake up it's gonna make it easiest i guess there we go So the coolest thing about this is that a block DP from um, either Ken, Nakuma, Ryu, stuff like that, it works on most characters. Uh, it has the same result as the actual spacing with the standing light punch, just as you saw. Um, so that's pretty cool as well. So you can get an infinite going in the corner after they do uh, a block DP. It works against Luke as well, for example. It's actually kind of crazy. All right. Moving on to the next one. So this one, um, there's a very specific setup that most of you guys have probably seen in my videos, which is if you stun a character with DP, you can backdash sweep into a light punch DP, and then you got the perfect spacing to get the setup going. So I'm gonna show you, go backdash sweep, light punch, There we go. So as you can see, you get the space, the perfect spacing for that. Um, after, obviously, this only works if you stun with a DP. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do, but I don't really like to keep all those specific setups in mind. Like I said, this is something that is in the past. 
because of the Light Punch Charge Gadoken uh, trick that I found. So what you can do after you stun something, so let's say we stun with, um, just for example, what you can do is just a simple jumping medium punch into standing medium punch, v skill cancel 2, straight into uh, Crouching Fierce. So it's gonna look something like this. There we go. So as you can see already in the top left screen, this leaves me at plus 10. Enough to get a crush, another Crouching Fierce going. And the further we are away afterwards, the easier it gets. So, let me show you guys how it's done. There we go. So, just like that, from any stun position in the corner, you can get this simple infinite going. Pretty straightforward. Alright, moving on to um, the next one. This one is a little bit harder to explain. Um, or pretty much to showcase, but I'm gonna leave it on hit. It works on block as well, obviously. But there's a pretty good sequence that you can do on block. Let me just show you what I mean. Which is... This is plus 9 with red. But also plus 5 with... Uh, the regular Gadoken. So this is a pretty good sequence. However, if you skip the last standing light punch, so we do this for example. Then you can actually get a pretty good sequence going. This is plus 9 as well on charged. Um, a lot of people fall for this. So... What happens is that you can get the infinite going from that as well. Some people try to press a button in between. And... That will not work. So let's see if I can actually showcase what I'm talking about. As you can see, you can already see that where this is going, right? Oh, I. Ryu, Ryu please. As you can see, once again, obviously you gotta work on the charge fireball timings. That's something you just have to get used to, but that's about it. Like, no more specific setups, anything like that. There we go. I probably I needed another crouching fierce there, but you get the idea. Once again, from a very specific sequence, you can get this stuff going. Um, Alright, next up is, once again, a very simple one. So most of you damn players know if you get a jumping medium punch or excuse me, a medium punch DP or a light punch DP, um, preferably medium punch DP actually, you can get a meaty light punch Kadoken, which leaves me plus 13 on counter hit, but if it's not on counter hit, it still gives you enough to get a standing medium punch. Of course I get a red fireball. Of course I get a red fireball again. There we go. So it leaves me on plus 11 without counter hit. Uh, works on back recovery and normal recovery. So it's just a really good media setup. And surprise, surprise, you can also get an infinite going from that as well. Alright, there we go. So as you can see, we got that working as well after a simple meaty setup. Alright, on to the next one. Yes, I've been finding quite a lot of these <laughs> since I found this trick. Um, but this one is actually very specific. This one is specific. In, not in the case of you need the, the correct spacing. Spacing always is involved a little bit, but as you can see, there's a lot more leniency. It's a lot easier to do and it becomes a lot more flexible. But in this particular case, this serves, this is from a mix-up, um, which is a side switch mix-up. But it's pretty similar to the Tatsu mix-up that I used to find in the corner with Ryu in Season 1. 
Um, it's, it's depending on the recovery of your opponent. So if they do a normal recovery, you will land behind. If they do back recovery, you will stay in front. And we actually need the back recovery from this. So the mix-up is kind of simple. Eats hands, medium Tatsu, EX Tatsu again. And as you can see, you land in front. And we got some a staring contest going on between Dan and Ryu. But we're plus 10 after this uh, specific situation. And we can get a very meaty Crouching Fears after this. So as you can see, we can get three Crouching Fierces after this. Um, I'm still, as you can see in the input command, I'm still inputting my V-Skill tan Cancel. And that is because it's actually, it serves as an option select. I'm gonna make another video about this. But generally, if I would land behind if it's normal recovery, that means the V-Skill 2 cancel would come out and I can still cancel into another button. Um, but because the Crouching Fierce hits so late, the V-Skill 2 cancel doesn't come out and I can just follow it up with a regular other Crouching Fierce button. However, after these three Crouching Fierce sequences, we can get another infinite. I need to charge there one more time. There we go. As you can see, keep the infinite going. Um, this one requires a lot of um, charge fireballs. And like I said, it is easy to distinguish these. If you, if you see the crushing fierce hit at the torso, you are going to need a charged fireball most likely. If you see the crushing fierce hit somewhere here, as you can see there it hits the head really high up, then most likely you are not going to need a charged fireball. But like I said, all of these different sequences require some, um, some specific charge timing, but if you play and practice the infinites long enough, it almost becomes like an automatic process for you um, to just realize when you have to do a charge fireball and for how long. Um, even so, I've been doing so many infinites nowadays is that I find I find it very easy now to see when I have to go for a standing fierce because standing fierce moves you forward and standing fierce is actually is one of those buttons that keeps the infinite going for Dan so he can still be in that perfect spacing. But I have found out and, and I, I can see visual confirmation when I have to go for the standing fierce. Uh, to keep being in range uh, but yeah those are pretty much all the infinites that i could find so far i'm sure there are a ton more um and now my goal is going to be um actually jimmy mdz jimmy challenged me to find infinites mid screen that is going to be impossible but to be fair impossible is not in my dictionary i'm going to really try my best to find anything sort of infinite going for mid screen or just like extensions that would normally not be possible um i found the possibility to make infinites a lot more easier and a lot more fun in my opinion so you know challenge accepted anyways that's it for now thank you guys for watching hope you guys appreciate these infinite videos don't forget as usual to stay cautious and i'll see you all next time take care